ETH Podcast COVID-19 Thanks for listening to our special edition of the ETH Podcast. We will be uploading several short talks with people from the ETH on different topics concerning the coronavirus pandemic. Tips on how to stay efficient even when you're studying and working from home. Information about why and how soap and ginger could keep viruses away. And also what it means to be teaching from home. Before we look at specific topics, let's have a look at the overall picture of the ETH. The president of the ETH is the first person we will talk to in this series. We want to talk about what the challenges were for him these past days. Okay, my name is Joel Mezzo, and I'm since uh, 13 months the president of ETH Zurich. I'm glad to be talking to you. We're speaking from computer to computer, and I'm in my office at home. Where are you right now? I'm also in my office at home. And as you know, we had to take some difficult decisions. And so, including myself, we are trying to work from home. And I must say that in this difficult situation, this is going quite well. And how are you feeling? How were the past few days for you? Okay, this is, of course, emotionally very strong. So we need to find the balance between the rational and the emotion. And, you know, there are different levels. Huh? We are citizens, so we observe what happens in our society. And we have to show solidarity with the people who are at the forefront. I mean, in hospitals, in shops, and so on. Then there is the role as president, take these uh, decisions, explain why we took these decisions. And finally, there is the personal level. We need to take care of our family, of my parents, who are also at risk of our kids. So all this is a mixed, very strange mix of feelings that we need to manage. And what helps is maybe to have every day some conferences, video conference with family members and to do some sport also. I imagine you've been thinking about ETH a lot, not only on a to-do list level, but also on a level of being in touch with your people. What crosses your mind when you think about ETH right now? So spontaneously, I would say I'm so proud of this school. I'm so proud by the way everyone reacted and uh, supported what we are doing, supported the executive board. And uh, I, think, I think something will stay from this situation in the future that puts the people together and that creates a lot of uh, positive energy. And I would like to thank all the collaborators of ETH from the bottom of my heart uh, for these reactions. The school was very, very quick in deciding to close down the labs and the buildings until the end of the semester. Was that a very hard decision to take? You know, we, we have been confronted to the situation uh, very early because of two uh, specific situations we have at ETH. Uh, we have 250 researchers in Singapore. So already in January, we were confronted with the situation. We needed to act. And then we have uh, the supercomputer in uh, Lugano, in the south of Switzerland, in direct proximity with uh, Italy. And of course, we have learned a lot through this situation. We have also our researchers who were informing us on the situation on a very regular basis. So very early, we have decided to be prepared for any situation. Because we know that when uh, the governments take decisions, then very often we have to move very fast. And that can be quite uh, problematic. So that's why we were prepared and we took these decisions slightly ahead of the government sometimes. The communication with other universities regarding this pandemic, how was that proceeding we have been communicating via different channels. Uh, we have a blog also where we inform uh, regularly what happens. When we decided to send the students home, uh, we informed all the students and all the staff via our rector, um, Sarah Springman. And then we, when we took the next step to send everyone working at home, then I informed you know, we are only in a first phase. Uh, this is a situation that will last, I think, for some more weeks. 
So we will continue to inform the staff at ETH uh, very regularly. We are just working on a concept now. And um, we will increase our effort in that direction. This is, I could feel also the worry of some collaborators, and that's why it is very important to communicate. And then we have organized this uh, town hall meeting. First time we do that completely online, and uh, we had 3,000 people watching and asking questions and so on. So it was a very interesting exercise. And from the emails I received, I think it was. Uh, very well received. Now, the ETH has top scientists. How is the ETH collaborating with hospitals during this pandemic? Yes, this is a very interesting uh, development that we can observe. So there are different levels. Huh? There are top-down initiatives. So, for example, we have put uh, under the leadership of the vice president for research, uh, Detlef Günther, we have put a group together and uh, additional means also to develop research around all activities around the coronavirus. I'm not talking only about biology aspects or medical aspects, but also the machine department, mechanical engineering is working on some devices for the hospitals. So this is the top-down approach. And then there are bottom-up approaches. There are students medical students, pharmacy students who took the initiative and contacted hospitals and are supporting the hospitals because, you know, what will be probably the most serious point to take care of is to get sufficient personnel working in the hospitals. So we are helping uh, on uh, different fronts. Now, you spoke about being in touch with students. What are the challenges, the main challenges for the students right now during this pandemic? The main challenges are to make sure, and this is our highest priority, thank you for the question, it is to make sure that uh, the students can finish their semesters, they can finish their PhD work without too much delay. And so we are putting in place various measures to allow this to happen. So we are making our rules maybe more flexible. One point, just an example of what we are doing, you know, at DTH we have very strict rules. If you don't pass an exam twice, then uh, you are out of the study, and then this rule will be relaxed for this semester. So there are also many other people working at ETH. It's not only students and uh, professors and researchers who come in. There's also a big group of people who work in administration or in the cafeteria or as cleaners. What about them? How do you stay in touch with them? So, of course, when we do the town hall meetings, this is also for administrative and technical staff. And here, since the government decided to shut down all schools, including the primary schools, then everyone having kids has to stay at home. And so we supported them in that direction, they have the priority. So we help them with various means to work at home and to take care of their kids. And uh, I think that measure was extremely well received. That was one of the first measures we have taken. And uh, of course, there are some units who are now having less work and other units who are overloaded. Think about all those working to make the online courses, for example. This is a huge exercise. We have hundreds of courses we need to put online. And so we can feel the solidarity within the school because people in my staff asking, how can we help other units at ETH? So this dynamics is really interesting to see. Now, this is a big crisis, of course, not being able to meet, not being able to go to the university, to the buildings, to the labs, etc. But do you also see a situation that might emerge from this crisis that might be positive, for instance, for research? You know, I think uh, every crisis has to be taken as a lesson and uh, we have to learn about what happened. And I think now it's still too early to go into this phase because we are in the middle of setting up everything. You know, there are still hundreds of details that we need to sort out. We have uh, every day a special meeting with the executive board of ETH to sort out all this. So this is a very intense phase. But uh, 
I foresee, and this is already in preparation, that we have uh, working groups working on what can we learn from this crisis. Just wanted to mention that independent of this, we had launched early this year a big initiative to position ETH for the next 20 years. It's called uh, Rethink, R-E-T-H, Inc. Okay, Rethink. And uh, several work packages are dealing with aspects that are related to what is happening today. So I think there will be a very interesting discussion starting uh, in a few weeks from now at ETH. Now, for the research, what we are learning is uh, how to set up groups to tackle a special issue on a very short time scale. Because, you know, research is an endeavor that is ongoing for years and sometimes decades if you go to fundamental research. And uh, we are learning to mobilize the people and to put projects together that have a very short timeline. And uh, I think we can learn to do that better. We were not completely prepared for this situation. On the teaching side, there are also things to learn. I think the acceleration towards online courses will happen. Uh, we were already doing a lot, and this is why we were well prepared for that. Also on the technical side, we increase our efforts by a factor of three to allow to, uh, to have all these online courses. But I hear some professors saying, actually, it's quite, quite good to do this uh, online. It's a different experience. And uh, we will keep classes at ETH, of course, but maybe to have a mixed so do you think this historic moment is going to change the way of teaching at ETH in the long run? I mean, not only now? Well, you know, we were, we were doing already a lot of changes, but this will probably accelerate the changes, yes. And, and then there is the personal level. Huh? I think we have to reflect at all different levels. I mentioned at the beginning the three levels, citizen and then the school or institution and then the personal level. So we will have to reflect that at the national level as well. Um, how can we be better prepared for such cases? Because I believe it, it will come back. We will have other situations of that kind in the future. And uh, for example, uh, our dependencies on some uh, raw materials in Switzerland is very acute. And here we need probably at the level of the continent of Europe to take measures against that. And then Personally, I think if I, I'm reflecting, I think I will spend one day doing work at home per week. And uh, I think this uh, could also send a very strong signal toward the school that this is feasible. What are your hopes for the ETH for the next few weeks? So as I said, we are still in the phase of stabilizing the situation. There are many, many questions that are now open And uh, the hope is that we can really answer most of these questions. As I said, what we want is to make sure that uh, students, uh, PhD students and other staff that are, for example, were, were to be leaving ETH just in the next weeks and cannot go abroad. And so we have to take care of them, uh, put measures in place that allow a very smooth transition. And uh, My hope is not for ETH, my hope is maybe for the society. I hope we find a vaccine as soon as possible so that we can get out of this situation and come back to normal as soon as possible. May I ask you to summarize your main challenges with the perspective of the university staying closed till the end of the semester, maybe in one to two phrases? So the, the main challenges is to make sure that uh, our students both bachelor, master students, but also PhD students don't suffer from this situation and can proceed with their studies, with their PhD work. And then we need to take care of the people at risk and take the measures that allow them to be in a safe environment. And the communication aspect, at the moment we are in a crisis mode and turn this into a positive mode where we can tell positive stories of what is happening. And I think those are the main messages that I would like to place now. Thank you, Joel. And whoever is listening, please let us know who you want to hear in this podcast regarding COVID-19 and the ETH. 
There is a feedback button on the website of the ETH podcast. Write to us or send us a voice message and we will get in touch with you as soon as possible. Goodbye for now. You'll hear from us soon again. My name is Jennifer Kakshuri, Tiswachter's Audio Story Lab and sound designer Luki Fretz. We produced this episode of the ETH podcast together. Stay home and stay healthy. Stay healthy.